Well, hello and welcome back here to this episode of Everlasting Summer. Now, in the last episode, a certain young lady had asked us a very important question. I don't get it. Why do you hate me so much? Her face became so serious that I was ready to believe that it wasn't just yet another trick of hers. Why do you think so? I have no idea. That's exactly why I'm asking you. I don't hate you. It's just sometimes you behave like... Well, you know. As simple as that, but still true. Like what? I have no idea. She lifted her gaze to me, boiling with curiosity. Well, for starters, what's the big idea of pouring compote all over me? You were asking for it. You looked like you were on fire. She smiled for the first time since we started cleaning. Yeah, sure. I heaved a deep sigh. Sigh. So, what do you expect from others then? Nothing. She replied acidly. This discussion was over, so I just continued cleaning up in silence. It took us a few hours to fix up the canteen. At last, all the broken tableware was gone, chairs and tables were in their designated places, the floor looked clean. You could eat your dinner off of it. We were sitting together with Yolana next to the food counter, breathing heavily, deservedly resting. If once I can't do the chest heaving joke, now you see how much effort has to be put in because of a silly trick. But I'm not tired at all. Though the sweat pouring down her face told the opposite story. Oh well, good for you. So, what are we gonna do next? I don't know about you, but I'd rather go. Nope. That's not all. You have to... She hesitated. To help me with another little thing. Thinking of another silly prank? You bet. She was smiling broadly. I'm not your man here. I'm more than fed up with just one punishment for today. Okay, here's the deal. You distract the Rosas and I'll go and rob the jewelry store. No, if you help me now, there won't be any more pranks. Sure, that was an inviting prospect, but somehow I couldn't bring myself to trust Yolana, even for a moment. Well, it wouldn't hurt to ask. So, what's your cunning plan? We're going to steal the candy. What? The candy, you fool, you deaf. I should have expected something like that. Candy is for kids. Soon the chef will go out to dump the trash. Nobody's gonna see us. Count me out. Ah, uh, whatever. Wuss. She grunted and turned away. Then I'll do it myself. And I won't allow. I couldn't even finish the sentence if Yelana had already jumped over the counter, ran to the cabinet, opened the door, and started rummaging through it. Hey, cut that out. It's not like you haven't got enough problems with Olga. She didn't reply. You won't get away with just cleaning duty for something like that. Yulana closed the cabinets. She held a huge bag of candy in her hands. Ah, you little put it back. She stuck her tongue at me and dashed off through the back door. I couldn't just leave it at that. I darted off in pursuit. Sure, the girl had quite a head start. But I still funneled all my energy into the chase. I won't lose her again. We ran through the square, turned in the music club building, and came out into the forest trail. I almost called Yolana. What I had to were starting to run out of photos when she stopped abruptly. I couldn't pull up as sharply, so I crashed into her, sending us sprawling. There was a short earthquake. We rolled onto the grass. Gotcha. Oh dear, don't like where this is going. 
I gave a victorious shout. Shout! No, you wouldn't. She replied in an ashamed tone. Ugilana was lying under me. Her face was right next to mine. I felt her erratic breathing and the heat of her body. Sure, right now she's only a child, but soon enough she'll become a woman. It was pretty embarrassing. You gonna rape me? She said, coming back to her senses. You want me to? Anyway, it was more like a game to her. Sure do. She gave a cunning smile and snorted quietly. <laughs> or was it just my imagination? I'm not really in the mood. Oh, whatever. There was another short earthquake. Yolanda reached up and bit me on the nose. That's foreplay where she comes from, I should imagine. I wasn't expecting that and even pulled back a little. Just a moment of hesitation was enough for her to wrestle out and run a dozen feet away. Watch it. You're gonna regret this later. She laughed out loud and disappeared into the woods. The candy bag was left lying on the ground near me. I wonder if she dropped it on purpose. It's getting near dinner time, so I had to hurry up and return the candy. And preferably, very preferably, stay under the radar. Of course, I'll explain the situation. It was Yulana who'd stolen them. But who's going to believe me? Olga was already waiting for me at the entrance to the canteen. Good job, senor. On what? I hid the sweets behind my back. The bag was transparent and too big to put into my pocket. I've tried the I was just pleased to see you line already. I was talking about the cleanup. Everything is clean and tidy. Well, yeah. And where is Yulana? I wish I knew. She, she'll come soon. Okay then, go and have your dinner. I entered the canteen. To my utter lack of surprise, it was full. Now, I really don't know how to return the bag without being noticed. Sure, I could do it in the evening, but what do I do with it now? I suppose I could sit next to Slavia and just tell her I was pleased to see her. Huh, speak of the devil. Samian! I turned around. Slavia was in front of me. Wow, what's that? I'm just pleased to see you. She looked at the bag that I didn't manage to hide in time. Caught red-handed, or more like sweet-handed. Time to prepare for a scolding. These are uh, sweets. Where from? I stole them, damn it. Got them from Yuyana. Oh, I see. Same old song and dance, eh? What do you mean? It's not the first time she's stolen sweets. And why? Why am I not surprised? Let me handle this. Thanks. Slavia saves the day yet again. She took the bag and headed to the buffet. I had no desire to listen to what she was going to say while returning the sweets, so I started to look around the canteen looking for a place to sit. It seems that I'll have to share a dinner table with Electronic and Shurik. There's no more places to sit. What's happening, gentlemen? and electronic. Every time I had to deal with them I got an itching desire to tease them or at least to drop some cheeky or cocky banter. It might be too risky to behave that way but the electronic brothers were my primary source of positive emotions. How are you doing? Fine. Hey, what about you? Hits and misses. Did something happen? Lots of stuff. My chairing? Nah, some other time maybe. Suit yourself! He made a helpless gesture. We're going to the ball after dinner. I always wanted a ball. Hmm. Electronic giggled. I know that. Who would you want to ask out? I want to ask Eric. I haven't thought about it yet. What about you? I, well, I. Hmm. It seemed to me this question caught him off guard. 
Ask Uyana. That would make her happy. No thanks. Electronic furiously waved his hands. And you, Shurik, you got to ask Alyssa out. Thanks. I'll pass. I like my wedding tackle where it is. He looked calmer than his mate. Oh, come on, guys. It'd be fun. And in any case, we've got things to do. We still have to finish the robot. Oh, that's a marvellous idea. Ask your robot out. Can it dance? It can't even walk yet. Shurik probably missed the point completely. In fact, by the look of him, he's probably been missing the point for the last ten years. Why, it'd be a great demonstration of our achievements in front of the camp. And what would we show to them? Yeah, you're right. They stared at their plates disappointedly. Oh, a double ellipsis. That's a rare sighting. Triple? All oh, the ellipses. Dinner was over and the pioneers started to disperse. What would he wear for the ball? I asked Shurik and Electronic. We don't have anything special to wear. We'll go as we are. He indicated his pioneer uniform. They don't seem to care about their appearance at all. Well, why should I care then? Wearing my winter clothes wasn't an option, so I'll just go like this. When does it start? After nine o'clock. Got it. I left the canteen and deeply inhaled the fresh evening air. I remembered those rare dances I used to go to at school. Hesitation, insecurity, even fear. I couldn't dance. I didn't know how to react if someone had invited me. I wouldn't dare to invite someone myself. All in all, I felt pretty uncomfortable about it. And it was even more unpleasant to watch others having fun. It wasn't envy. It was more a disconcerting feeling that people were able to enjoy them something so odd for me. I thought that there was still lots of time till the ball so I could sleep a little to be fresh. In the evening. Entering the camp leader's cabin, I flopped onto the bed and instantly shut my eyes. Ellipsis. Strange enough, I got up right on time without an alarm. The clock was showing nine. Such a rare thing to happen. I felt sluggish, though. Probably it wasn't the best idea to sleep during the day, after all. Well, I have to go. In a couple of minutes, I was standing at the square. The loudspeakers and some DJ equipment were installed near the monument, and the trees were decorated with light strings. Ah, a typical country ball. A lot of pioneers were around, but no familiar faces, so I just sat on the bench and waited. I didn't have to dance, after all. Maybe I'll be able to sit and chat with someone. Hey there, sad face. Uliana. Here to suggest something? Come on, let's dance. It's way too early. There isn't even any music yet. Bleh, you're so boring. Yeah, I'm not the merriest person for such an event. She ran away. So, Uliana did wear something like an evening dress. Pretty funny. Hi. Slavia. All of her. Hey. She sat down by my side. How's the evening? Fine. Why are you so sad? I'm not. Okay, well, dancing will surely cheer you up. Maybe. Don't forget to save one dance for me. She laughed and ran towards the music equipment. The situation was getting serious. I wouldn't be able to sit through the whole dance party. Hi. Lena came closer. Oh, hi. You're here too. Is that such a wonder? Yes. Okay. Gonna light this party up? The joke unexpectedly fell flat. Ellipsis. Lena blushed and looked down. Well, maybe that's not the best idea, setting things on fire. 
Okay then, I guess I'll... Yeah. She left. It looks like the whole camp was at the square. The pioneers formed large groups, talked, joked around and laughed. At the DJ's panel, Yulana argued loudly with Olga about the playlist for the evening. And here it is. The music started to play. I don't know the band or the song, but if you asked me, I really felt that I'd tag it Soviet pop classics. The pioneers just stood there for some time, as if not hearing the music. It's always hard to take the first step, especially if you're pretty sure that you're the only one who would take it. Yulana seemed not to grasp that simple truth. She reached the centre of the square with a few bounds and cried out loud, What are you standing around for? And started to wiggle ridiculously. Wiggle is the exact word. You couldn't find a better one. It looked so silly and funny that I couldn't resist laughing. She noticed it. Hey, Simeon. I pretended I couldn't hear her. Stop pretending. Come over here. I kept ignoring her. The pioneers slowly realized that they weren't too sexy for this party and started to dance. It looked really silly from my point of view, shaking one's arms and legs to the beat of a long forgotten hits. Come on, get real. Of course, I couldn't dance at all, but this evening couldn't be called a dance either. It could be called an evening, but there you go. Hey, Semyon, what are you sitting there for? Don't you want to dance? I was so deep in my thoughts that I hadn't even noticed Slavia. Not really. You sure? She smiled. Maybe later. Damn, what are you even here for? One more invitation to dance would completely ruin my pride. I started to think of an appropriate excuse to leave and was looking for the moment to do so, but then I saw Lena. She was slowly heading my way. Maybe we should go. Where to? I was so immersed in my thoughts that I didn't really get what she meant. To the infirmary. But if you want to stay here and dance... I doubt she was going to dance. Lena had stood aside the whole evening. No. Thou pass. Let's go. At least I won't have to stand here like a shy nerd. Seriously, trying to conceal myself in the corner wasn't very pleasant. A bull in the china shop would be more agile than me on the dance floor. I didn't have the slightest intention of dancing in the first place. Well, should we go to the infirmary? Lena brought me from my thoughts. We'd, be, we'd been just standing near the canteen for some time. Yeah, sure, thank you. What for? She looked at me in surprise. Well, for getting me out of there. I shouldn't have told her that dancing was not my thing. It's, you know, so boring there. Seems to me you don't like dancing. There was not a trace of sarcasm in her truthful, even childish face. Seems that she really doesn't understand. Yes, don't like it at all. I'm not into it. Me too. No one ever invites me to dance. Lena blushed and stared at the ground as usual. Strange. What's strange? Well, that no one ever invites you. You think so? Again, she looked at me with an expression of such surprise and a lack of understanding. I got confused and couldn't find what to say in return right away. Yes, certainly. If I liked dancing, I would have invited you for sure. Thanks. We didn't say a word for the rest of the way. Lena obviously felt too confused by my awkward compliment and didn't know what topic to choose for a conversation. It was completely dark by the time and the gloomy building of the infirmary covered the night mist looking strongly like a haunted house. I felt a strong desire to turn around and walk away without making any noise. I threw a quick glance at Lena and look, noticed she looked at, uh, like usual, shy, modest, uncertain, but not in any way scared. It just made me even more uncomfortable. 
it, it can't be that she's not scared while I... Suddenly an owl hooted nearby and I shivered. Layla seemed to either not hear it or pay attention to it or just not be scared by it at all. I hardly could believe the third option, but I didn't want to ask her about it, giving away my own fear. I entered the infirmary and found a switch in the dark. Will nurse come later? She won't come. Okay, she won't come. Understood. Wait a second. What do you mean, she won't come? Ah, I see. It's not that I'm afraid to be alone with Lena in this isolated room. With a bed. Indoors. Oh yes, indoors. At night. With no one around. And the bed. Only in movies does something happen under such circumstances. It is just that I am with Lena and not with Yolana or Slavia. And it has seriously changed my attitude towards things happening. There are the boxes. She pointed at the messy stack of boxes. There was about a dozen of them. It would take much more than ten minutes of work. I put one of the boxes on the table before me and started to take out its contents. There were bandages. Lots of little packs of bandages. Here, take this. She gave me a piece of paper. There were some fields and I quickly realised that I should put the name in the left, the description in the middle, if there is one, and the quantity in the right field. It's not a database, but it'll do. I'm still trying to work out what this thing in my hand is with the pointy end that the ink comes out of. The work started in full swing. Simeon? What? I looked at Lena. She stared at me for a couple of moments, seemingly making up her mind to do or say something, but then lowered her gaze again. No, never mind. It was physically hard for me to just sit around, not saying a word. However, I didn't dare speak first, not only because I couldn't think of a good topic of conversation, but that I was just feeling shy. This girl could easily be embarrassed by anything. Simeon? Yes. You're counting them all over again. Indeed, I had started to take out and put into the database the bandages I'd already counted. Oh, sorry. She didn't answer. Hey, where are you from? I mean, where did you come from? Meaning, where were you born? I mean, where did you live? That was concise, wasn't it? Well, I... There's a town not far from here. Not far from here? Where is that? Somewhere. If I told you, I'd have to shoot you. Looks like she doesn't want to talk about it. Is Lena hiding something too? Is it ex explicable? In the, it is explicable in the case of Olga, but in Lena's case, it's absolutely not like her. Is it a secret? Are you all actually Nazi war criminals hiding here as teenage girls? No, just. So, is it somewhere in the south too? I should have thought of something more original. Every single one of my sudden ideas turned out the wrong way, and this attempt to play spy worked yet even worse. And I thought about South just because the only pioneer camp of the Soviet Union I remember was Artek. Yes. Lena hesitated to reply. I couldn't quite tell if she was lying or not. Don't you like it here? I wonder what part of what I said made her think so. Absolutely not. I like it here. My false friendliness sounded very insincere, grating upon the ears. What about you? I like it. It's so calm here. There are lots of books in the library. And the people are nice. Nice, but not all of them. Why? Did I really say that last bit out loud? Turns out I did. Well... You know, Yolana, for example, she's like an energizer battery with a completely unbalanced point of power application. Oh god, he's a nerd. Battery? What? Maybe I really was sent back in time. Yes, they didn't have batteries in the 80s. Never mind. 
Or Alyssa, a saying, a pioneer is the kid's role model, certainly doesn't describe her. If everyone started following her example, it would be a complete disaster for the country in 20 years or so. However, thinking about it now, you can draw the conclusion that everybody did follow the example of Alyssa in the 80s. Where I probably am right now. She's not like that, actually. Not like that? Not like what? Not like what you said about her, whatever that was. To begin with, I hadn't said anything. I just stated the fact that she's not the best example to follow. Well, maybe. Sounds like you know her well enough. Probably. We did escape here in 1947. Oh, sorry, I shouldn't have said that. I asked the question only to keep the conversation going and didn't expect an answer like that, especially the 1947 bit. Alyssa and Lena were so different, the idea that they could be close was unbelievable to me. We came from the same town. As if she had foreseen my question. We have common friends, even though Alyssa is one year older. Okay, it's a little bit strange. Oh, not like that. I'm just surprised. Everyone gets surprised. Lena smiled a bit. I took the second box. Analginum, activated charcoal, analginum, activated charcoal, Uncle Tom Cobbley, saline solution, potassium permanganate, futuracillin, amalgam. Lena always spoke in simple sentences, apart from that one. How can I communicate with her if every conversation turns into a monologue or just an awkward silence? I wasn't quite satisfied with the state of things. Sometimes it looked like she was hiding something behind her mask of shyness, but what? You know, I read a book not long ago. Do you like science fiction? Not much. Damn, another failure. Well, if you don't like it, then what books do you like? Different kinds. The conversation wasn't going smoothly and I had to turn it off for the better. Who knows why, but I thought about that dance again. Feelings of uneasiness, discomfort, and even shame overwhelmed me once more. It looks like I'm not that different from Lena when it comes to such things. I am shy and afraid of things I don't understand or can't do. I should probably overcome my own fears before anything else, and this will help me understand her better. I've made up my mind. There are only a couple of boxes left. Yes. Hey. I've got an idea. How about we go to the canteen afterwards? I think a tape recorder was taken back there. What is it doing in the canteen? I hesitated. What for? There's a bed here. Uh, her sincere look made it clear that she hadn't the slightest idea of what I'm going to offer. Well, frankly speaking, or speaking to Frank, I just don't know how to dance. That's why I don't like it. That's the reason I was so confused back there. Maybe I could thank you by dancing with you. But I like my feet the way they are. She stopped sorting out the medicine for a moment, blushed and looked right into my eyes. I got a bit stubborn. It really was a stupid idea. It's okay if you don't want to. I don't insist. What if someone sees us? I certainly didn't think about that. It's not a big deal, but everyone is asleep already, and no one is going to go to the canteen at night, except for me the last two nights. Oh, and Slavia, and I'm fairly certain I saw Olga there the other day, but apart from that, how do we get in there? I should have thought about it beforehand. Well, I did have Slavia's keys, but I didn't want to mention them. Someone could get the wrong idea about me stealing them. That moment I regretted that I still didn't get my cell phone from the leader's room. Anyway, I had to say something to get her away from this awkward topic. Hmm. What kind of music do you like? Different kinds. I'm not really into it. Then let's imagine it's playing now. I mean that you, that we hear it playing. How's that? Like it plays in your head. I still remembered the melody the pioneers were dancing to. The music and words were 
really clear in my memory. I'm not sure I can do it. You can just try. Probably. I've got her consent. In Lena's case, that probably can be considered yes. We silently sorted medical supplies for the rest of that time, writing down their names and quantities. I should pay more attention to every word I say after such luck. I stayed silent most of the time though. Soon we finished the last box. I gave Lena the filled in list and started to stare at her like I saw Bigfoot riding a unicycle while juggling piglets. And what a pair of piglets they were. It was amazing, frightening and above all mesmerizing. She suddenly broke out laughing. What? That look of yours. What about it? It's just funny. Really? Yes. So where are we going to go? Where? Her last words unsettled me. I completely forgot what we were talking about. Frankly speaking, I had completely left this world for a moment. Well, you know, to dance. Lena blushed r right away, and her face took a strange expression of slight shyness, uneasiness, and fear. Ah, yeah, sorry, I was just lost in thought. Let's go to the pier. I don't know why I chose that place. Maybe because you could run into a pioneer at the square in the residential area or near the canteen, but not on the pier. Only vampires, but not pioneers. That's what I thought, at least. I was only guessing about the vampires. Or maybe because of the large, bright moon reflected moon. Um, or maybe because of the large, bright moon reflecting on the water in the night. And it's a full moon today. I don't know how, but this solution just offered itself. If you don't like it, then we can... No, that's a really nice place. Nobody will see us there. Lena locked the door and we made our way to the pier. Night fell on the sleeping camp. Shall we follow the road? Why? It will be faster through the forest. There is a nice path there. It's dark there. Are you afraid? Not really. If you don't want to. Okay. But can I? Ooh, squishy moment. Without thinking, she grabbed onto my arm. Is it okay with you? Yeah. Now it was my turn to blush. Of course, said the man with no eyes. We walked through the forest. It was hardly a forest, though, more like a small grove between the camp and the pier. About a hundred metres long. I would never think that there are, would be anything to be afraid of, or even on my own. But it just seemed like Lena's fear was contagious. Incidentally, for our American viewers, uh, 100 metres is about the same as 4,276 miles. The branches swayed over us. I shuddered, and Lena clung onto my eye even more strongly. Don't be afraid. It must be a squirrel. No, I am pretty sure it's an arm. Yeah. We reached the pier. The night was really beautiful. I walked closer to the river and called Lena. Look. The pier, the boathouse and the moon were reflecting in the water. It looked like another world on the surface of the water being a door to Wonderland. You could just jump and find yourself on the other side. May I have this dance? I extended my hand to her and bowed clumsily. Lena hesitated. I must have overdid it with my mannerism. There's nothing to fear. I'm no good at it either. Why either? She never said she couldn't dance, though it was kind of obvious. Okay. Lena gave me her hand. I led her a bit aside and gently put my arms around her waist. We just stood like that for a few moments. And what next? Well, I don't know. Do you remember that song? Barely, but I remember. Great, let's waltz like in the movies. How was that? 
Instead of just answering her, I carefully started to move in a circle with Elena. See? Not that hard at all. Yeah. We waltzed for several minutes, or whatever you could call it. I felt her warmth, though we were not that close to each other. Her chest heaved heavily, and her face started to blush more and more. Lena didn't look at me, averting her eyes from one side to another. I suddenly realized that I had never felt anything like this before. Her tenderness overtaking reality as if I found myself in another, better world. I realized that I didn't want to let this girl go, and that I would give anything just to go on waltzing with her forever. I clasped Lena tighter, and only then did she look straight at me. There was surprise and confusion in her gaze, but no fear whatsoever. She wasn't afraid of me, and didn't push me away. And you said you can't dance. I really can't. I was confused. I didn't res expect that reaction from her. Where was her confusion, shyness, and fear disappeared to? You too dance pretty well. I know. A playful smile crossed her face. Or maybe it just seemed so to me. No, I swear I saw it. How is that possible? The image of shy and modest Lena didn't fit together with this moment at all. What should I say? What should I do next? I could only keep on waltzing with her in this dance, which was getting stranger with every passing minute. Simeon! Simeon, where are you? And with that... I think we're going to call it an episode. I'm sorry that went on a bit longer than it should have, but... I just wanted to see where they were going to go, and look, she's so cute. So anyway, until the next time, I've been Simon Parsons. I've been Olga. This has been Everlasting Summer. Thank you, and good night.